Hello again, it's me. Last time I promised I would tackle the Arc Linux for gaming and make a tutorial on that. This has been a terrible idea, which I started documenting live on YouTube. Currently I have done 9 live streams where I consistently install, test and break my Arch Linux deployment. The task turned out to be more complicated than doing a secure Linux setup. Sacrificing convenience for security means that your setup is less complicated and more streamlined in a way. But, when you want things to be convenient, clear and ready for typical first-time user shenanigans, well, let's say this was a cathartic journey of self-discovery where we made friends with packages along the way. Everyone, I think we need to format the Linux again. I messed up the BTRFS partitioning. I have had some assumptions before going into this thing. I've used my secure Arch Linux tutorial as a baseline, so I wanted to switch some things up. For example, I wanted to try out mkinit cpio instead of dracat, install grub, try making unified kernel image working using both of the above, and use btrfs with support for snapshots. That last one, especially, gave me the most grief. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Throwing out Dracut in favor of mkinit cpio turned out to be fairly simple and after some R&D I came to a conclusion that it's actually easier to use since it has lots of hooks reconfigured and can be installed and forgotten. For Dracut I was writing my own pacman hooks and scripts but with mk things were pretty much just working. I got populated slash boot directory in no time. Grub was also a breeze since it's not that complicated. But then, I thought it would be nice to have a unified kernel image. Getting mkinit cpio to start spewing out UKIs was easy as toggling a single option in its config, but it turned out that informing grub about set image is not that easy. I mean, it's easy in terms of writing a hook or a script, but by itself grub has no feature where you could point it to an EFI partition and tell it to scan for other EFI binaries. I really, really didn't want to write custom hooks for that or make mess of my system by using some our projects just to plug in the hole, so I gave systemd boot a try. And I have to say, systemd boot works great, really. Throw out grab to the trash right now. Systemd boot does a lot of things for you and has built in features that make things really convenient. For example, if you place your EFI binary anywhere on your EFI partition, Systemd boot will scan for it and list it as an option. No need to write custom scripts or hooks, it just has a scanner. And since unified kernel images can have kernel parameters baked right into them, it really requires nothing more than just that binary to boot up your OS. But wait, there's more. Let's say you want to fiddle around with your boot entries or add a custom one. With grub, you can go the dangerous route and edit grub.cfg directly, risking your whole loader to break, or you can add your hook and let grub mk config do the spiel. The problem is that if you've made any errors, the generation itself might fail. Systemd has made this way easier. It will simply search for files with that conf extension located in your EFI partition in loader slash entries. The files themselves have a very simple syntax. Go check out archviki if you want to know more. For the meantime though, I reverted back to grub and dropped the unified kernel idea. I wanted to try out BTRFS snapshots which already have a package that hooks them up with grub and makes snapshots a bootable option. So in theory, you can snapshot your whole system, mess it up and then just reboot it and choose a working version. That didn't go well. As I got into the whole BTRFS snapshots thing, I started realizing lots of things. Many tools that serve as a helpers or GUI frontends for BTRFS have assumptions about the way you divide or even name your subvolumes. I was not aware about that, especially about the add subvolume naming convention, so I fell back to the old trusty method of simply making the snapshot of root and then switching up the default root subvolume with the snapshot. That also didn't go well, because I forgot to make an exclusive subvolume for my snapshots directory which meant that snapshots also included a directory where snapshots were being kept. A bit confusing, I know. I managed to perform this successfully once off stream, but on the stream, however, my luck has run out and I could not get it to work again. As I started to grow tired of BTRFS snapshots, for the time I switched back to the other issues I had to face. 
You've probably already seen me using a graphical interface already. I decided to go with KD Plasma since it turned out to be fairly easy to set up and in my opinion had a decent reasonable defaults pre-configured during install. Now, in order to make my graphical environment make full use of the GPU, I had to install NVIDIA drivers. You would be surprised, but that part gave me no problems at all. Simply installed some required packages, being GCC, Linux headers and CMake, and then install NVIDIA OpenDKMS and NVIDIA Utils, and you're good to go. By executing NVIDIA SMI, you can clearly see the KDE is using your GPU in order to enhance your system experience. The integrated Flatpak Hub also allows you to easily install anything you might need. That includes Firefox, Console Terminal, but also Steam. To be honest, aside from BTRFS, everything else was a breeze to set up. I installed Steam, then try out some games, run a few benchmarks, and that would be it. And that's the place I'm currently at. I'm going to stream more of my adventures, so be sure to subscribe and also like this video if you enjoyed this format. The streams have much more going on and delving into everything that has happened is near impossible with a finite time I have to make this vid. All of my findings will be compiled into a more streamlined installation tutorial, but for now this thing needs more time to cook. Until then, bye!